guys welcome back to the channel daughter of an increase my name is nate denise for those of you who are new to the channel or who just happen to stumble across this video and i post new videos every tuesday and thursday all about my faith god christ and expanding the kingdom of god today's video is one that has been requested multiple times and uh, most recently from within my facebook group by i believe her name is alicia hurt and it's basically how to bible journal without a journaling bible and um i think that's a great topic because a lot of people tend to think they need a journaling bible to bible journal and you really don't um i started off doing my journaling bible method that i do now within my journaling bible with a regular study bible um and it is this bible which you guys have seen have seen me review already this is the women's study bible um in the kjv translation from thomas nelson this was the first bible that i had um, my mom actually got me this for, get, got me this start in 2016, March 4th, 2016. And um, this was the first Bible that I used to study both the Gospel of John and then Romans. Um, and I mean, I did all of my notes in this Bible. You guys can see, like, everything that I wrote and needed to write was done in this Bible. I mean, sticky notes all over the place. And I also, sorry about all the extra sounds and stuff on my table, but like, I would write in the margins if need be, sticky notes all over the place, like that, hope you guys can see, like I wrote in the margins, I had no shame in that, and that's how I started off Bible journaling, so I'm going to show you guys how to do that. So really, all you need is a Bible, any kind of Bible, it can be a regular Bible, it can be a study Bible, I just love my study Bible. Um, this is in a pink cafe Olay. I know a lot, some people have said that they don't like this Bible, but I do love this Bible, it's a really good Bible, but um, yeah, all you need is a Bible, some type of paper, a notebook basically, um, your pencils, your pens, your highlighters, whatever else you're going to use. Again, I'll show you guys the tools that I'm going to use as we get into this, but I'm going to walk through with you guys um, how I do Bible journaling in my Bible without a journaling Bible. So stay tuned if you want to see more. Okay, guys, so I'm zoomed in extra close so you guys can see the uh, words. But um, like I said, I'm going to show you guys how to do some Bible journaling without a journaling Bible. All you need is a Bible in some paper and highlighting utensils writing utensils and things like that i am going to be using two pens um i have the zebra f301 ballpoint and a 0.7 millimeter and also the pentel rsvp fine point which is a 0.7 millimeter blue ink black ink um you know Let's see if i can get this to autofocus sorry about all the shaking <laughs> But um, I have those. And my Bible, you have seen me do a, a video on this already. You can click the on the screen. It's the King James Women's Study Bible from Thomas Nelson. I love this. Um, and you can have a notebook, paper, or a journal, whatever the case. I'm just going to be using paper today for the time being. Just to show you guys how I do it. And then you need your writing utensils. So I have the Crayola Twistable Colored Pencils. The Crayola Super Tips and then all of my highlighters so these three packs here are these zebra mild liners and then these are the sharpie smear guard highlighters just have those but um because you're using a basic bible i would say either colored pencils or gel highlighters i use the casemate gel highlighters but i'm not going to use those today um so i'm going to show you guys how to do this with psalms chapter one and um, let's move that out the way so we're going to do psalms chapter one and prior to doing any type of Bible studying, I would say pray. Um, do a quick prayer, just asking God to help you focus, to um, allow the Holy Spirit to teach you what it is that it needs for, needs for you to learn, for him to convict you if you have anything you need to be convicted of, for him to continue to just open up your eye gates, your ear gates, the word of God, and um, just to keep you on point of your time with him. Now, I am going to post a link down below to where you can check out two prayers that I normally go to. I have some written prayers that I just, I wrote them out and um, I pray them every time I'm going to read the word of God, though I add to them, but I have one for when I'm doing my devotional times and then one specifically for when I'm praying the word of God that encompasses all that I just said. So um, I definitely would say check those out. Let me see if I can get this to focus even more. 
so yeah hopefully you can see this clearly um but i'm gonna show you guys psalms one which is only six verses it's gonna be quick and easy to share with you guys and um before i begin i will say study the the word of god book by book do not hop around from different books and if you do um i mean it's nothing wrong with that but you can always take the book and the scriptures out of context i've learned to um just pick one book of the bible and read that one book of the bible completely through from first chapter to the end of the last chapter of that book because it helps you understand and if your bibles have introductions like all of the bibles i think i own all include introductions um so definitely read through all of the introductions because sometimes one bible might have stuff that another bible might not have have or when it comes to the date where books were written it can be complicated um so what i like to do is read all the different study bibles that i have look at the introductions especially where it comes to the date and time and it helps me to actually narrow it down to a specific date um because some bibles might have a broader date where some bibles might have um a specific date so it helps me to narrow it down and um really get a true understanding so definitely read it through to get the author date background and all that stuff which i have done already before but you guys can do that and then you can understand the different things and stuff like that so i'm gonna start off with um psalms one over here and i'm going to use my black ink pen this is a zebra f301 ballpoint in the 0.7 millimeter so psalms one the blessings on the godly and i'm just going to first read it through without any markings um i have used this bible before when i before i got my journaling bible like i said to study so um just reading it through this is a king james translation so use whatever translation you're comfortable with i'm just going to use this to show you guys how to use a regular bible to bible journal so starting off with verse one Blessed is a man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. <clears throat> Sorry, you guys. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. So we've read it through, and I actually need to grab my nook real quick. Okay, here it is. Hopefully, it's still got some juice in it. Yes, it does. Alrighty. So I'm just using, um, just opening up something. So like I said, the first step is read through it after you pray and get your introductory information out of the way. You read through the scripture, which we did. You read through the whole scripture. Now, because Psalms is very short, you can read through the whole thing. Now, when you're doing another um, book of the Bible, say like John or Acts or something like that, I would say do this paragraph by paragraph um, because it can be long. So the next step that I would say is circle words that you want to define. And again, these are words that you do know and words that you don't know. The reason being is because all of the Old Testament of the Bible is written either in Hebrew and some parts like Daniel and some of the minor prophets are, were written in Aramaic. And then all of the New Testament is written in Greek. So you might find one word in the Old Testament. And it might mean something different from what that same word means in the New Testament only because they um, are written originally in different languages. And also because um, our English definitions sometimes are not the same definition that is supposed to be used in the scripture. So I would say look up the English definition as well as their original language. So in this case, it would be Hebrew. So um, that's that. I don't know what that is about. But um, so now we're going to circle. So. I'm going to start off by circling blessed and I'm trying to get this so I can get comfortable. I think I put my camera too far, but whatever. I'm going to circle blessed because um, I want to understand that. I'm going to underline, I mean, circle walketh, counsel, ungodly, standeth. Sinners, sitteth, scornful, 
the light law circle meditate planted when a circle wither prosper chaff or chafe I don't know if it's chaff or chafe um, congregation righteous judgment and mind you these are words I know but I'm circling them anyway perish so I have the words that I want to define right so you can do this one or two ways um you can immediately just define your words or you can do this kind of like a verse by verse study which is how i like to go about it but um i'm gonna do the definitions separate so in this case i would use sticky notes so i'm gonna use either the owl or the coffee cup and probably the coffee cup because i really am craving coffee right now so i need to quickly Fix this so that I can um sorry guys I just want to fix this a bit okay so that I can move this a little closer to me so I have blue letter bible open right now on my nook and um we're gonna go to Psalms 1. And it has a complete thing out. So I'm going to click on the scripture and I'm going to hit into linear. And then in the he it's going to tell you which interlinear it is. So it's Hebrew, like I said, because the original language is in Hebrew. And this is specifically just for verse 1. So it's going to break it down in um, each word with its Strong's number. So that you can get the true definition um, from the Hebrew dictionary. So it has blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. So like I said, we're going to do this verse by verse. So we're just going to start off with verse one. I want to underline, not underline, I want to get the definition of blessed. So what I'm going to do is the Strong's number is H835. I'm going to open that up. Strong's H835. Escher. Escher. Okay, so we got the pronunciation. So, blessed is Escher in um, Hebrew. And it says, outline of the biblical usage, happiness, blessedness. And it gives you more information here. And you can scroll down. So Blue Letter Bible is good for that. I prefer Bible Hub just because it breaks everything further down. But um, happiness, blessedness. So I'm also going to look that up in my Bible dictionary here. This is a compact Bible dictionary from Ronald F. Youngblood, F. F. Bruce, and R. K. Harrison. I adore this thing. It is amazing. So... It doesn't have the word in here that I need. I'm now going to look what's in the Nelson Encyclopedic Index. So here it is. In the Nelson Encyclopedic Index, there is a word study for it, so blessed. And this is more so in the New Testament that it's giving me. So blessed in the New Testament, this is the word. But I don't want the New Testament. I want the Old Testament.
Yeah, you can tell this is all New Testament if you guys look here. In the scripture section, there's mainly all New Testament with a few Psalms, so I'm not going to use this either. So that's why it's good to look it up. So what I'm going to do is open up Bible Hub right now. And I will do a video on Bible Hub soon. But I'm going to open up Bible Hub text analysis. And the text analysis for Bible Hub is the same as um, using the Blue Letter Bible app, but I like it better because it really breaks it down further. So, yes, the Strong's number is 835. Asher, blessed. Um, it tells me that the origin is from the word Asher. It's happiness or blessedness. So, if you guys hear that ringing outside, um, like I said, I'm by the window. Okay, so I have that definition down. So I'm going to write it on the sticky note, like I said. Am I going to write it on the sticky note? Yes, I am. So blessed. Basically, it's happiness. So that basically would say happy is the man, right? Because we see here that it says blessed is the man. So happy is the man. Simple as that, right? The next word we have is walketh. So I'm going to go back. And for that, the Strong's number, I'm going to show you guys again is oh sorry guys that walk is h 1980 so just clicking on h 1980 the hebrew word is halak i'm probably saying it wrong so let's see strong's h 1980 halak halak and the form just below that yalach Yalach. So, halak. Um, still probably saying it wrong, but we get that in. Walk it is walk it basically says to go, walk, or come. Um, to die, live, manner of life, to traverse, to walk about, to lead, bring, lead away, carry calls, to walk. That's basically what you see. And um it gives you other things there. So those are the definitions and considering the text walketh not in the council, um, I don't think it means to actually walk, but I think it's more of like to live or a manner of life. So happy is the man that lives not in the council. You see how that goes? So that's why I think it's important to really look up the true definitions in their original language. So next we have walketh. And again, because there are so many different translations, I would say to replace the word that you're defining with those definitions. So, blessed is a man that walketh. Blessed is a man that walks not in the council. Okay. Blessed is a man that departs not in the council. Okay. Blessed is a man that lives not. That sounds good. Blessed is the man that leads not. Okay, that's a little different to traverse not. So, I mean, definitely interchange the word with the definition. So, basically, live or manner of life. Moving on to counsel. And again, we're only doing verse 1. So, these are all definitions from verse 1. For that, it's advice or purpose. So 
also advice or advisement. Sorry if you guys can see this. The way I got the camera positioned is weird. Next we have ungodly. So ungodly is basically um, the guilty of sin, the wicked that are hostile to God. So... And I mean, you literally would just look up a definition. So I'm sorry this is taking me some time. But I mean, when I study, it literally takes me hours upon hours to study the word of God. Because you're really going in and breaking down things to fully understand it. So standeth would be to stand, remain, endure, take one stand. Which I think is crazy. Um, to station, to cause, to stand firm, to maintain, to appoint, to ordain, to establish. So in this aspect, again, you would put the different definitions in the sentence so happy is the man that lives not in the advice of the wicked nor remains i like that endures i like that so i'm gonna put remain abide i like that definition I'm just looking through all of the definitions here, if you guys can see. Like, there's a bunch of different definitions here that I'm looking to see which really suits that specific scripture. So, um, I think remain and abide are, like, the two that really... I like persist as well. So, persist... And I'm going to put endure as well. Next, we have sinners... those exposed hmm. I'm going to cross this out that's not the definition I want to use so not those exposed but um One accounted guilty. I'm going to look up again another definition just to see if there's anything else for that. Okay, so yeah, one accounted guilty. They also have criminal, but I'm not going to put criminal. I'm just, I don't know. I'm not. So moving on, 
صرف So that means to dwell, remain, sit, abide, um, to be inhabited. Okay, so I'm going to write dwell, remain, abide, inhabit. And then scornful is the last one. Scornful is to scorn, make mouths at, talk arrogantly, to boast, to mock, deride. Um, so I'm going to put boast. Boastful mockers and talk arrogantly. So, those who are arrogant, let me just look up one more thing because I might want to actually circle that word. Yes, I'm going to circle seat. This assembly. Sit in company of. So there we go. Those are the definitions that I have, okay? But now that I have definitions ready... Okay. I have all the definitions written, right? So now I'm going to kind of reword this sentence using the definition. So happy is the man that lives not in the advice of the wicked or guilty of sin, nor does he remain in the way of the ones accounted guilty, nor does he dwell in the company of mockers of God. So you see how I quickly use these definitions to really break down that verse to a more better understanding that I can get. So happy is a man that lives not in the advice of the wicked, nor remains, dwells, or abides in the way of the ones accounted guilty, nor abides or inhabits in the company of mockers. And those mockers basically are mockers of God, the ones who talk arrogantly or the boastful. You know, so that's a quick breakdown of that verse. So now that I have the definitions, I will go in and underline. And I know this seems like a lot, you guys, but this is a good way to really break down the verses for yourself. So blessed is a man. I'm underlining that. Blessed is a man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. So I underline blessed is a man. I'm underlining walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. I'm going to underline standeth, nor standeth in the way of sinners. I'm going to underline nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. So that's everything I'm underlining, okay? Now with your notes, you can do your notes however you choose. Um, this is not going to be a true representation of how I do my notes. It's it's not. I'm just going to let you guys that, know that now. But I want to get this written down so you guys can understand it. I may do more videos like this because I know you guys want to see like how I really go through my studies. But um, you, you can notice that we're already a few minutes in, like 20 minutes in, and we're still on verse 1. That tells you how much studying is take, it's like takes place. 
So, um, obviously you would write down the book of the Bible you're studying in the chapter. So, um, I guess I can write. Psalms. Bible study. Because I will keep all my notes together. So I will put Psalms Bible study as like the main thing. And then um, I can write down the chapter that I'm focusing on. So this is chapter one. And then from here, I then go verse by verse. I prefer verse by verse studies because it allows me to break down the verses better. Just moving my mic over. So sorry if you guys are having a hard time hearing me now. But I needed to move the mic over a little to get more space. So chapter one. So Psalms Bible study. This is now where I'm going to have all of my notes for Psalms. Again, you can have this on a computer. You can type your notes up. You can um, put your notes in a notebook. I'm just using paper for the time being because that's how I used to do my notes on paper and then stick them in the binder. But um, chapter one. And then I'm going to do verse one. So VS one and box it because that's what I need to understand that everything I'm getting ready to write is for that verse. So before I write my notes, I'm going to go in with color because you guys know I love color. I'm just using the Crayola Twistable colored pencils and I'm adding color because I need color in my life I mean color makes just the world go better so I'm gonna circle walketh in blue I'm actually gonna circle all the words that I defined in blue now with this when I use my um journal and bible I don't use specific colors I just color to make everything bright and fun but in this Bible, um, a regular Bible, I would actually use specific colors for specific things. So in this case, it's going to be blue. So then I would just mark everything here with blue. So again, in a journaling Bible, you don't have to color code. I mean, you just journal in your thoughts. But I think in a regular actual Bible that's not a journaling Bible, I would say color code everything so that you can see where everything is so then i would just go in and circle the rest of these words in the blue Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use these Sharpie smear guards because they're not too bad with bleeding. And um, I'm going to underline. So blessed is the man I'm underlining in purple. Can't really see it, but it's underlined in purple. Going in with green, I'm going to put walketh not in the council of the ungodly. Pink nor standeth. In the way of sinners, orange, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. So I have my colors done. You really can't pick it up on this camera, which I apologize. So I just highlighted that, but again, you can't see. And um, bleed through is not that bad with these markers, as you can see. These highlighters are not bad with bleed through. So I have my colors done, right? So now I have verse 1 down. I don't have that many minutes left, so um, let me pause the camera real quick and fix it. Hold on. Okay, guys, sorry. I had to just clear some more space so I wouldn't be interrupted with this study. But, um, okay. So, like I said, Psalms Bible Study, Chapter 1, Verse 1, because I'm going to go verse by verse, and we're still on verse 1, as you can see. So, now that I have that done... And I have my things marked, which is really hard for you guys to see on camera, unfortunately. Which is, I'm probably just going to go back to getting the, using the other camera. But, um, verse one. I'm starting off with blessed is the man, okay? 
so there's so many ways that you can do this but i'm just going to mark a, po a bullet point with the purple highlighter so that i know that this point goes back into that part of the verse so blessed is the man basically that verse is saying happy is the man or woman obviously man or woman um I'm going to say that it could be even content because um, if you're happy, you're most likely content. So, they can also be content. I'm sorry, guys. I'm just thinking here. So, um, happy is the man or woman. They can also be content with life. Okay. So, hmm. I'm gonna make an arrow and say fulfilled because I feel like if you're happy, then you're most likely content, and if you're content or happy, then you're most likely feeling fulfilled within your life. So, um, happy is the man or woman. They can also be content with life. life. Um, then I put an arrow for fulfilled just because I'm just taking this stuff off the top of my head. Um, what else? I guess that's pretty much it for that first verse. So, going back to it, it says, blessed is the man. So, happy is the man. Um, content is the man. Fulfilled is the man. Um, and obviously that what they're content, blessed, or happy with is their life. So that's that. Moving on, the next one we have is walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Using the green highlighter, I'm going to make a green bullet point. And again, you can do this type of studying in so many ways. I'm just showing you guys one way. Um, there are literally tons of different ways to do this. So Okay, sorry about that, you guys. Got interrupted again. Um, this is one very choppy video. But um, again, so the purple goes with happy is the man or blessed is the man. So the green dot that I have here goes with this part, which I underlined in green, which is walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. So we understand that walketh from the definition. Let me move my definitions up here. So we understand that walketh is really more of to live or a manner of life. We know that counsel would be advice and the ungodly are the wicked people or those hostile to God, right? So now that we have that understanding that it's basically that lives not in the advice of the wicked or those hostile to God, right? So, I'm going to write, does not live what does it say, does not walketh not in the council does not live i'm gonna say by the advice i'm sorry if you guys can't see this <laughs> bear with me i'm definitely gonna you go back to my other camera does not live by the advice of the wicked those hostile to god now, the way that I come up with my notes is I take a minute and I sit through and I try to think things on my own. I spend a good portion just coming up with the content that I, not the content, but like my thoughts 
on my own and really try to articulate what it is that I'm thinking about that verse. And then once I'm done with that, if I feel like I'm missing something or if there's something more, I will then go and use commentaries and look up those. As you guys can see, um, the commentary here, I don't know if you really can see it. Hold on. The commentary at the bottom. I have not even gone through or read um, because normally I underline as I read the commentary. So I have not gone through this. So I make sure to study on my own, which is why I kind of like journaling Bibles because they uh, they stop me from automatically looking at commentary. But um, okay, so walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Basically, I have does not live by the advice of the wicked, those hostile to God. Um, what else can I write? Um, in order to do that, I feel like you have to be able to discern the ungodly. So, hmm. you must be able to discern truth, I feel like, um, from a lie you really must be able to discern that especially nowadays with people who are out here preaching the word of god but don't really have um an understanding of the word of god i feel like you should be able to discern the truth from a lie so i feel like that's it yeah okay that's it so moving on we have nor standeth in the way of sinners so that's pink right pink so i'm gonna make a pink bullet point now let me just move this out the way here for now <laughs> so nor standeth in the way of sinners that's basically saying that um you won't sit with those that are accounted guilty so does not hmm does not remain now let me quickly go back to um what i was reading because i'm just going back to blue letter bible to the interlinear section again because i feel like the way in itself is something so let me just in the way 1870 i'm so sorry you guys cannot see this ah all right, so in the way, 1870. And I don't have my mic plugged back in, so hold on. Hopefully that's better for you guys to hear. <laughs> um, so in the way. Strong's H, 1870. Dere. Dere. Okay, so the way is basically um, the path the manner the habit so i need to go back and circle the way and down here if you guys can see the way um habit manner moral character path and I think that's very important to know um, because again it helps you further understand the scripture and not take it out of context so the way so now I got a better understanding so it's basically telling me that um, a blessed or happy person does not remain in the path 
so it does not remain in the path and or habits of those accounted of those accounted guilty so again let's read the verse nor standeth in the way of the sinners standeth basically means to remain the way is basically um the habit man or moral character or path and sinners are those accounted guilty so it's telling me that this type of person this happy person does not remain in the path and or the habits of those accounted guilty so you're not going to be around these people because obviously those people will rub off on you um so i like that so let's go back and i'm going to take some time to really ponder this through i know it's, it's a long video and i'm sorry that it's so long um but I want to get as much meat out of this verse as possible. I'm also going to write direction here. And direction. So here we're going to go, does not remain in the path and or habits of the, of those accounted guilty. Um, so if you're looking at it in a sense of path, I guess the path that the, the ones accounted guilty use are like the easy ways um, out, the ways that help them escape. So, therefore, this happy person wouldn't take the most easy way out. The most easy way? That's not the right word. Um, they would take the, the road less traveled. Um, would not take easy ways slash shortcuts. takes the road less traveled and for that I'm going to say God's way and then for this one I'm going to say Satan's way because there's definitely a difference um, because the path of the sinners is definitely, um, walking down the way that Satan has given them the easy way out, but the road less traveled is that which God gives us the path to, um, but we don't want to have to deal with obstacles and troubles and, um, you know, just mountains of drama. So we choose to go the easy way out, but the easy way out is Satan's way and the less traveled is God's way. So that's how I'm looking at it. Um, next we have nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. And that one I used orange. So let's go in with the orange. Just a bullet point. And does not dwell or abide in the company of mockers Or those boastful or arrogant. So, not nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. I basically put 
does not dwell or abide in the company of mockers or those boastful or arrogant. And I got that, obviously, from the definitions that we looked up. Um, I put an arrow because I'm going to see if I can further think of anything. So, I'm going to write that uh, mockers. Criticize the people of God. The people and things of God. Okay. I'm going to go back to where I put fulfilled and I'm going to put a righteous person. So I have my notes. So all of this is verse one, right? So what I'm going to do next, moving that over, I'm going to rewrite verse one with the understanding of what I wrote down here on my bullets bullet points so happy content and or fulfilled with life is the one who does not live by the advice of the wicked does not remain in the paths of those guilty in God's eyes. And does not dwell or abide in the company of mockers, the boastful, or arrogant. So this is verse one rewritten. Happy and content or fulfilled with life is the one who does not live by the advice of the wicked, does not remain in the paths of those guilty in God's eyes, and does not dwell or abide in the company of mockers, the boastful, or arrogant. So that is my breakdown and understanding of verse 1. But I'm also going to make a bullet point and um, write something else that will explain the reasons why. So using this blue pen... Um, I'm going to write the answer of why I feel that is, and that's because um, we must be fulfilled. I'm sorry, we must be able to discern truth. I'm going to just use this blue pen, I mean black pen, whatever. Um, So a righteous person wants to stay right with God
can discern truth. does not take the easy way. But works hard. God's way. And is proud to be a follower of Jesus Christ. They desire what the Father, which is God, desires. So there we go. This is all of verse one. And what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna use this blue pen and just bullet point this section here because this is basically a rewritten version. So, again, blessed is a man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor sitteth in the way of sinners, nor, s I'm sorry, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of the sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful in my understanding after you know breaking down the words it basically means happy content and or fulfilled with life is the one who does not live by advice of the wicked does not remain in the paths of those guilty in god's eyes and does not dwell or abide in the company of mockers the boastful or arrogant why because a righteous person wants to stay right with god can discern truth, does not take the easy ways, but works hard God's way and is proud to be a follower of Jesus Christ. They desire what the Father God has, or rather desires what the Father God desires. So um, that's pretty much it just for the first verse. I mean, you guys see how long this video is and we literally just did one verse. Um, so you can kind of see how I go about doing my Bible journaling in um, on regular paper now obviously you can then take post-it notes you can write your notes on post-it notes stick them in the bible um you can also write in the margins like if i wanted to look up some scriptures let's see um let's see if i can find some scriptures scriptures that cross references so i am going to look at Okay, Matthew 7, 13, I'm going to look at. And um, I'm going to say that that goes in respect to nor standeth in the way of sinners. Um, I understand that standeth in the way of sinners is basically that I don't remain on the path of those accounted guilty. But scripture, because scripture tells me in Matthew 7, 13, um, and this is in the King James translation, enter ye in at the straight gate for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction and many there many there be which go there that yeah i'm gonna read that in a whole nother translation because that just confused me so let's open up so that's matthew 7 13 7 13 and I'm going to read that in the New King James translation. So enter by the narrow gate for the wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who go into it because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life. There are few who find it. So Matthew 7, 13 and 14 is a good cross reference. So what I can do is I can also mark that cross reference here. So... Where it says take the load less, tra less traveled God's way. I'm going to make an arrow and write C. Matthew 7 verse 13 to 14. Right. And there's another cross reference for that. Which is going to be Psalms 1611. Oh, wait, I just passed Psalms, didn't I? <laughs> Psalms 1611. 
So 1611, and you guys are getting a peek at my old stuff. 1611 says, I don't know if you guys are going to be able to see it here. The way I have this camera is set up is so funny. So here it says, you will show me the path of life and your presence is fullness of joy at your right hand are pleasures forevermore. So I'm going to write that as well. Psalm 1611. So what I can do with these cross references if I wanted to. I'm going to find a better way to do this next time. I'm going to actually use blue ink for this. Um, I'm going to write Matthew 7, 13 to 14, Psalm 16, 11. Box that and make an arrow. And because I use a pink highlighter, I'm going to highlight with the pink. Using a light hand, nothing crazy. And I use the pink, I mean the blue pen, just because it doesn't seep as bad. Um, and you guys can see what I mean. Um, you really can't see. You can see slight fading or show through, but um, ghosting rather is what it's called, but nothing crazy. So now that I know that North standeth in the way of the sinners, I have cross references to prove that point. So, I mean, that's pretty much it, you guys. I'm not even going to continue going on because this video is super, super long with all of the edits that I'm going to have to do to get this to a uh, easier kind of way to understand. But um, that's just breaking down verse one and how you would do it in a journaling Bible. Now, obviously, it's easier to do in a journaling Bible because it has the margins and you don't have to use a separate notebook, which is why I prefer a journaling Bible because I can keep all of my notes in one location. But if you don't have the money for a journaling Bible or you don't want to buy one, use paper. I would say get a notebook that's dedicated specifically to that book of the Bible that you're going to read. Um, I'm all for topical studies, but I think the best way to study God's word is by doing it book by book because it really helps you to understand um, the word of God in a more efficient way. But yeah, that's it, you guys, for this video. I hope you guys understood everything, got everything, and that is pretty much it. I'll see you guys in the next video. And if you want my study with me videos to be like this, let me know and I can do that for you guys. But that's it, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!